Bienvenido a un nuevo episodio de Pure Farming 2018. Este es de el canal de YouTube para PC Gaming Enthusiast. <laughs> this is not a Spanish channel, guys. Don't worry about it. But this is the new episode of PC Gaming Enthusiast Pure Farming 2018 being brought to you by me. My name is AK, and I am one of the writers here. And I've done quite a few videos with this game, but today we are in a brand new location. This is the Hills of Colombia. Yes, it is a very interesting map, uh, quite exotic compared to the other maps I've seen. It does seem to capture that uh, South American vibe pretty nicely, like from the bit of architecture I've seen, and also just the environment does seem pretty good. I haven't been to Colombia, but I'm actually currently in Ecuador right now, and I've also visited Peru, and it does look like this down here, so yeah, props to Ice Flames for getting that right. So today, we're actually going to be doing some mechanic work. We're not gonna be doing any farming today, but we're gonna be taking these machines over to the workshop, and just fixing them up. And I wanted to pick this because this is actually a mode called challenge mode, which I f have featured before, but this is yet another mission in challenge mode. And I decided to pick this one since it deals with repairing vehicles because I wanted to use the time to talk about the improvements I want to see made to Pure Farming 2018. Now, you can clearly see by that big bright logo over at the top right corner it says preview build which goes to show that this is not like the actual full retail release so things are subject to change before that when the game does launch next month but in the meantime like you know i just wanted to uh bring some light to these issues that i faced with this game and what i hope to see the developers do in the meantime so, let me just start off by saying that no game is perfect. Absolutely no game is perfect. You, if you can take even games that are rated like 10 out of 10 and you can find an issue with them. Usually when a game is rated 10 out of 10, that doesn't mean that it was like absolutely 100% perfect. But, it was just something that the, the cons were not outweighed by the pros. Or rather, I should say the cons were out, outweighed by the pros. So it's where <clears throat> there were issues, but they weren't like super major issues that totally destroyed the gameplay experience. And that's what a 10 out of 10 game truly is. So with that being the case, uh, what is Pure Farming 2018? Well, I'm not done with the review yet. I'm still playing it, clearly. So I'd say like if I had to review it right, right, right now, I'd probably give it like a 7 out of 10. Let me explain why. So, for starters, this challenge mode, right? It does say in the main menu when you select it that this is for advanced players. And what that simply means is, is that it's targeting people who are more or less familiar with how farming simulators in general work. And also at the same time, I guess it's expecting you to understand how this game works. So it's probably anticipating that you've played a bit of it. You understand the mechanics, and that's all fine and dandy, but this challenge mode is seems rather odd in a way. And I'm totally lost right now. <laughs> I'm looking to see where the other vehicles were. Ah, oh, there it is. I was going the right way. Perfect. Move over to the next truck. So yeah, as I was saying, yeah, this challenge mode is more or less just expecting you to understand how farming simulators in general work and also how this one works. And as a result, it does not explain things. And when I say it doesn't explain things, and just give me one second here. I wanna set a marker so I can find this a lot easier. I'm gonna do that by pressing here, okay. Yeah, so when I say it doesn't explain things, I mean that it just plain old wants you to figure out your objective by itself. Like, it'll tell you what your objective is, but it's not going to, like, explain it to you. It's not going to describe exactly what it is that you should be doing. Like, you know, in most games, when it gives you a mission, it walks you through that mission. And some games make it very obvious, but for the most part, you usually walk through the mission, you're giving, like, little nudges, just so you're not aimlessly wandering around, right? And this game, 
Like, with some of these challenges, I was totally, completely lost as to what I should be doing. Like, this isn't actually the first mission here on the Columbia map. There's actually another one, which is related to farming, where you have to save your crops from a fire. That may be the next episode, but my thing with that is that I spent a good, like, almost 10 minutes just trying to figure out what it exactly is I needed to be doing. And I did figure it out, but it was kind of frustrating. And that's not the only mission where that has happened. Like, I've played a few of the other challenge mode missions and I've ran into the exact same problem. And it doesn't ruin the experience. And uh, again, the game does say that it is for advanced players. But at the same time, I feel like it should do a little bit better than that. Like, it, you don't have to make it blatantly obvious as to what you should be doing. Like, you don't need to, like, put a neon sign up showing that this is the way. But you can at least... Like, just describe to me what is it that you want me to do. That's really what I want from this. So that's my first issue is with the challenge mode. The second issue with the challenge mode is that uh, it, there doesn't seem to be much reward in actually doing any of these challenges. Like, there are good scenarios in terms of the fact that they diversify the gameplay experience a bit. Giving, like, for instance, giving you the task of fixing all these machines, right? That's pretty nice. But, it's, it's like, even when you complete it, because I've completed this challenge before. When you complete it, that's all you get, is the fact that you've completed it. It just throws a big banner up, like, oh, you've completed this challenge, play another one. Like, I wish that there was some actual, like, reward to be had by completing these challenges. Because these are all time challenges, right? So it's not like you can just aimlessly wander around and do whatever you want. You need to actually finish these challenges properly, and you need to do so on time. But you really don't have any penalty for not doing it properly, and you don't have any reward for doing it properly. So regardless, win or lose, it's really nothing much. So I wish like you could probably get like maybe some cash bonus, to put into the free play mode or maybe you unlock a new piece of machinery that would be pretty cool now I don't know if that's gonna be implemented into the full game I don't know if maybe if you complete every single challenge that you'll get some special reward I honestly don't know but for right now it seems that just they're, they're, they're just there just to pad out the content just to give you something to do and I appreciate that it's there because it's meant to A, not only test your skills, but it's also meant to give you something to do quickly. Like if you want to play the game, but you can't sink too much time into it, maybe you have to go out somewhere and you have like an extra 30 minutes and you just want to hop into pure farming. That's what this challenge mode is also for as well, but I wish it was a little bit more refined. And speaking of refinement, I think the next big problem I have is the handling. Like the handling in in general is pretty hit and miss like I'm here in a tractor moving at 24 well I was moving at 24 miles per hour and it's decent but it seems so sensitive and I brought this up in my in very first video with this game my initial impressions that the handling was decent but it feels like farming simulator handling and when I talk about farming simulator handling I literally mean the OG farming simulator from giant software that series which I have continuously kept comparing this game to, yay. <laughs> Probably getting tired of that by now if you've watched the other episodes. But it does control exactly like Farming Simulator, which is eh. Like, I'm not a, the biggest fan of the handling in Farming Simulator. Like, it's not bad, but it could be better. And seeing that Pure Farming 2018 is an imitation, let's be honest here, it is an imitation. It is a direct very obvious answer to giant software's farming simulator right the entire formula is more or less the exact same thing except uh ice flames has done a little bit more here like for instance i've talked about how i like the how slick the ui is like there's a drone mode here which is pretty cool a little other a few neat little features that this has which sets it apart but there's still a lot of similarities, and one of those similarities is virtually the handling. Like in a tractor, it's not too bad, especially when you have a piece of machinery. It does behave somewhat well, but the minute you start getting up to speed, that's when you see how flawed it actually is. Like a tractor should not be able to move like this. Like, come on, that's way too sensitive of handling. 
So, I wish that they would make it a little bit more realistic. Like, look at games like the American Truck Simulator and Euro Truck Simulator series. Or even better, look at spin tires. Look at the way those games do handling. Their driving mechanics feel natural. They feel realistic. This feels kind of cheap, in a way. It does feel kind of cheap, does feel really basic in comparison. And I'm no game developer, so... I'm not gonna say that it must be so easy and these developers are just being lazy because, again, I'm not a game developer. But when you have other examples to look to, it kind of makes... When, when things aren't up to par and other experiences, you notice it. So I just gave those two exam examples, the Truck Simulator series as well as Spin Tires. Like I said, those games feel very nice. The driving mechanics are very nice. So because we already have that, when you have something like this or Farming Simulator where it's not as good, you do notice it. That's basically what I'm getting at here. So yeah, if it means lifting more inspiration, go ahead, do it. That's okay. <laughs> That's okay if it just means delivering a much better product. And when it comes to making these simulators, like I think I mentioned this in the last video, but when it comes to making these simulators, like because simulators are meant to be as realistic as possible, that's why they are simulators, right? When things aren't up to par, you tend to notice it. They tend to stand out a lot more because these games don't rely on that quote unquote video game logic. Like, you know, some games allow you to do some very absurd, silly things that you wouldn't be able to do in real life, whether it's just for the LOLs or just because it's a game that's not trying to be realistic. Like, it's totally set in fantasy, so therefore it's not supposed to make sense. But when you have these games, these simulators, which are trying their best to mimic reality from their visuals straight down to their gameplay style, you notice the flaws, you notice the illogical things a lot more. And one of those things does happen to be the handling. Like, I wish the handling felt a little bit better. But maybe that might come in time. If Pure Farming 2018 does become a very mod-heavy game, and it actually does already allow modifications, of course, they're not released yet because nobody except press has the game right now. But when I say if it becomes a mod-heavy game, I mean if it builds a community, a very active modding community, then perhaps that this could be adjusted. Just like Farming Simulator, would, in many aspects, has been adjusted thanks to modders. But I don't want it to become reliant on that, you know? It's great to have mods, it's absolutely great, but I almost feel like some developers, not all, but I feel like some developers just kind of more or less rely on modders to take care of weaknesses or shortcomings that they otherwise should have been the ones to fix in the first place. Like, you should never have a game that totally relies on mods to fix shortcomings. Like, it's different if a mod truly adds something to that game that wasn't there before and it's could only be done thanks to the modders, but it's different when the game had some serious flaws and it's because of the mod that the game has actually been made better. I feel like in those aspects, then the developers are the ones to blame because they should have caught on that beforehand. So, that's the dilemma here, but we now live in 2018 and we have things called patches and updates, so the product that you're going to get more or less might not even be what you're seeing before you right now. There might be a few changes by the time this is released, because again, this is the preview build. There actually already has been an update released for this since I got it a couple days ago. It was like a 300 megabyte update, and I'm not exactly sure what it did. I think I mentioned this before in another video. I'm not exactly sure what it did, but it clearly did something to be that big. But yeah, I'm just hoping they do get more patches and updates that do address some of these issues that I have. But, you know, despite all these uh, complaints, like, I'm not throwing shade at this game because I really do enjoy this. Like I said before, I wanted a answer, like a true answer to Farming Simulator simply because I want Giants to feel some heat. I don't want them to get complacent, you know? Like, yes, they are the top dogs of the genre right now, but that could change if they get complacent. 
So it's good to have direct competition like this because it's going to inspire, or hopefully it should inspire those developers to do better. May not necessarily happen, but I'm hoping that it does. Now I'm just gonna cheat a bit here, and we are going to just quickly jump over to the other vehicles. All right, now we only have two more that we need to fix, so hopefully we can quickly get this one done. But anyway, that's basically the thing that I'm saying is that I am glad that this exists, and I just wanted to fulfill that role of being like a true competitor to Farming Simulator. Because I want to see Farming Simulator do better, and potentially even be usurped by a newcomer such as this. Because that would really make things put the pressure on giant software, really make things interesting. But of course only time is going to tell. And even though I have hope for Pure Farming 2018, I still must admit that you know, hey, it doesn't have the same brand recognition that Farming Simulator does. It does not have the fan base at all, so it's starting from ground zero, right? Starting from ground zero, so it's going to have to prove a lot. So, really, if anything, the pressure is more on Ice Flames here because they're the newcomers, and just like what I've been doing, when this thing releases to the public, everyone's going to be comparing it to the original Farming Simulator. So, Ice Flames really needs to pull up their socks first and foremost and get their act together even before we start talking about what Giants needs to do. And speaking of Giants, I'm sure by now you've heard of Farming Simulator 19. It was a soft reveal was given last week. It was just a CGI trailer, but the details that they told us about were pretty interesting. It's going to have a new graphics engine, all new gameplay mechanics, all new farming activities, new animals, new crops, new machinery, new, 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 everywhere, right? Which is great news. And I'm excited to see what comes of it, especially the graphics overall, because one of the con other cons I have about Farming Simulator is that it feels too, or should I say it looks too simple for a modern title, right? So I'm excited to see how the new visuals look. But with that being the case, like with all those improvements that they're promising, of course, only time will tell to see if they're actually worthwhile. I think I'm going the wrong way. Okay, I need to go back down there, yeah. Only time will tell if those improvements are worthwhile until we actually like lay our eyes on it and better yet actually play it. That's when we'll know for sure if this is truly an improvement. But with FS19 seeming to be a big step up, again, that's going to put even more pressure here on pure farming to do even better. Because if it doesn't manage to be on the same level as FS19, then it's going to have a bit of a problem. You know, when you have competition like this, when it comes to sales, it is important that you beat your competition because otherwise it's going to happen. All right. Congratulations. You have met the minimum completion requirements. You can continue playing and try to meet the maximum requirements for another achievement. See, that's the thing. All you get is an achievement like, oh, I did this thing. I hate achievements, <laughs> at least achievements in their current form, like I wish getting an achievement, whether it be on Steam or Xbox Live or PSN, actually resulted in some like tangible rewards, like credit on my next purchase or something like that would be great. Don't give me these meaningless achievements, they're basically like getting stickers. <laughs> like oh neat, you did this thing, whatever. <laughs> but anyway, that's not really the fault of this game. Actually no, it is the fault of this game, because like I said before, if you're gonna give me a challenge mode, Give me some rewards for completing these challenges, otherwise I have no incentive to do them, other other than the fact that it just allows me to explore the game. And actually that reminds me of another con I had, is that so far, the only free-to-play map... I said it again, I think I said this before in the last video too. The only map that you can play in free roaming mode is Germany, for now. I'm hoping that changes because the Germany map is very small and I would hate for there to only be one map that you have total control over. But I'm hoping that these other maps, Colombia, Italy, Japan, USA, don't go to waste, because these seem to be pretty decent maps. Like, one of the things I like about this game is how detailed everything is. Like, the LOD, the level of detail, is 
very, very nice. Like, just the, you could see that a lot of time and care was put into the architecture of all these buildings, the infrastructure, as well as the modeling is very, very nice. Let's jump into the interior view for a second. Like, see? That interior is very, very nice. It's a lot of attention to detail. Very nice. As well as the landscaping. Landscaping is top-notch in this game, so... All of these things show that there is a lot of potential here, but... It's one thing to have potential. It's another thing to use that's potential. <laughs> yes, and we try and sound all whimsical right now, right? <laughs> but, yeah. That's just what I'm hoping to see from this. Uh, I do expect good things from this, though, because I'm liking what I have so far. There are a few flaws, but I have a feeling these flaws aren't fatal. Like, they can be fixed. They can be adjusted. Question is, will they? <laughs> you know, like, now devs have the power to correct their shortcomings and their gains, but not all the time do we see them actually do it. Sometimes these games just remain flawed forever. And again, if they're not modded to be improved, then they just stay like that. And I would hate to see that because, again, I really want this game to succeed. I really want this to catch on. I love to see it because competition breeds creativity, which benefits us as the consumers, right? Because that gives us way more variety, more games to play and enjoy. So, yeah, definitely something to look forward to here. But that's all I wanted to say for this video. I just wanted to take the time out to... Throw a bit of shade while we're under the shady trees. Wow, that's a bad joke. <laughs> but yeah, I wanted to take some time to throw some constructive shade at Pure Farming 2018. As I continue to play it before it releases next month. And by that time, I will have my full review. But yeah, so far I still do enjoy it. You know, like, you know, every game is flawed, but I'm still enjoying this. Like, the cons are there, but they're not killing the pros, which is good. But anyway, guys, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and please comment down below. Tell me what you think about the game from what you've seen, and also tell me how you feel about these gameplay videos because this series is actually doing a lot better than I originally thought it was going to do. Like, the last two videos, because this is the fourth one, the last two videos have gotten nearly 100 views at the time of this recording, the first video got, got a little bit, but the last two have done pretty well. And even though 100 views on these days here on YouTube is nothing, that's still better than what I was expecting, so I'm happy. <laughs> to me, that is an achievement within itself. So, please comment down below, tell me what you think about these videos, give me some feedback. That is how this whole YouTube thing works. We, the creators, we provide the content. You, the consumers, you consume the content. And the thing that links this beautiful cycle all together is you giving feedback so I can improve this. Tell me what you would like to see. Tell me if you enjoy the quality of how things are. If you want me to improve anything, whether it be the way I play the game, whether it be my audio, go ahead. Let me know down below. Just tell me. Good or bad, just give me some feedback and some constructive feedback. The same way I just gave Ice Flame some constructive feedback just now. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Throw it right back on me. <laughs> but that's okay. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.